When it comes to managing critical infrastructure, there's an ongoing debate in the community whether or not you should virtualize it or just run it on bare metal. Particularly in this video, I want to talk about firewalls. Namely, I want to address the question, should you be virtualizing your firewall? When we're talking about critical infrastructure, I believe that the firewall really is the most critical part, because at the end of the day, who cares that your services are up and running if nobody can get to them? Now, before we go any further, I want to mention that my personal preference is to run my critical infrastructure on dedicated hardware whenever I can, it generally makes life much simpler. That being said, I have run my firewall in the past as a virtual machine, with varying degrees of success. In my previous video, when I talk about my home lab plans for 2023, I mentioned that at the beginning of 2022, I was running OpenSense as a bare metal deployment. Later, I migrated to a virtual machine instance, and now, in 2023, I am migrating back to a bare metal installation. In this video, I want to talk about some of the reasons why. Running your firewall as a virtual machine if you already have a virtualization server that is always up and hosting other workloads makes a lot of sense, I thought so too, but it came at a cost I didn't foresee, and that cost was complexity. You see, I trust OpenSense or PFSense or any other firewall for that matter to behave nicely in a VM and to perform just as well as it would on bare metal. The problem is that the extra layer introduced by virtualization opens up the door for many more things to go wrong. Say you are running your firewall as a virtual machine and you pass through the NICs instead of using virtual bridges to make it as close as you can to bare metal. Great. Now, a few weeks have gone by and you added another PCI device to your server, maybe a GPU or an NVMe drive. Why is that a problem? Well, it is likely that the address of the device has changed and now your virtual machine doesn't actually have the NICs passed through, but some other PCI device. In the best case scenario, it's just that your virtual machine will boot with a, a random PCI device, but the worst case scenario is that it may try to get some PCI device that is actually used by the host server, and that will cause your host not to boot properly. Needless to say, this will cause your firewall VM to not boot or to simply boot but not work, even though you didn't really touch any of the configuration related to it. It was an oversight, but really a very annoying one to troubleshoot. Running your firewall as a virtual machine implies, by definition, that you will also be running other workloads on that server. Now, this is not a problem in and of itself, because that's really the main advantage of virtualization, that you can run multiple things on a single server. But the problem is if you start over allocating maybe CPU and RAM to all of your virtual machines. Say you have, I don't know, six Windows uh, VMs, and Windows being Windows, they all decide to update at the same time. This can cause an unexpected spike in CPU usage, which can and most likely will slow down the performance of your virtual machine that's running your firewall. Now, this may not necessarily be the best example, but the main idea here is that if you have your firewall running as a virtual machine, it runs on shared hardware, and being shared hardware, its performance can also be impacted by the other workloads running on that shared hardware. So my point is that it's not that OpenSense or PFSense or any other firewall won't perform as well in a VM. It's the case that your other workloads are now also responsible for the performance of your firewall. Another problem you may run into when trying to virtualize your firewall is the actual running cost of that virtualized infrastructure. Especially if you didn't have a virtualization server that was always on before, it is likely that it's gonna be cheaper for you to buy a lower powered system and keep that on 24-7 instead of trying to keep your big virtualization server on always. The hardware requirements for PFSense or OpenSense or really any other firewall are not all that high. You can really get a cheap computer from the secondhand market and use it for that. Realistically speaking, any old i3 or i5 should do just fine, especially if your internet is at or below 1 gigabit. That computer will most likely run quieter and cooler than your virtualization server anyway. Personally, I had my first taste of PFSense on an old computer I found in my parents' attic. It was an old Core 2 Duo with like 2.5 gigs of DDR2 and it was just enough for me to start tinkering with it and learn. Later on, I moved to an HP small form factor PC that had an i5-3470 and 8 gigs of RAM and it was running like greased lightning. For more inspiration on this topic, you can check out the uh, video I linked in the description. It's a 50 euro firewall build from Wolfgang. Finally, let's talk about IP assignments. There are really only two cases here. You can have your virtualization host behind your firewall or next to it. What do I mean by that? 
Having your hypervisor behind your firewall means that its IP address will be in one of the LAN networks that is managed by your firewall. Now, this is quite cumbersome because this network doesn't actually exist when you're installing the OS on your hypervisor. And this means that you will have to reassign the IP addresses and network interface after the firewall VM is up. There is also the annoyance of losing access to your virtualization host if the firewall is down, especially if you have VLAN set up. Basically, if there is no firewall, there is no way for you to get to the web UI or have SSH access to your virtualization host. Essentially, having your hypervisor behind your firewall creates a chicken and egg kind of problem and for some reason that really annoys me. Your hypervisor depends on your firewall for the networking part and your firewall depends on your hypervisor to run. On the other hand, having your virtualization host next to your firewall means that its IP address will be in the WAN section from your firewall's perspective. Now, this is a problem because it means that you will need one public IP address for your firewall and another one for your virtualization host. This essentially means that you kind of ruled out the option of this being your main and only firewall. You will probably need another firewall in front of this. You no longer have the problem of losing access to your virtualization host UI if the firewall is down. You win some, you lose some. That being said, there still are some situations in which I believe that it makes sense to run your firewall as a virtual machine. First of all, we have the home lab in a box kind of scenario. Due to financial or maybe space constraints, you are limited to only have a single server to tinker with. And that is perfectly fine, you don't need an entire rack to have a home lab. You can do some pretty nifty things with a single box. Personally, I started off with a single computer back when I upgraded my main computer to a gaming PC and I used my old one as a server. The nice thing about such a setup is that you don't really have to worry about networking between the servers because there are no servers. You can set it all up in software and that's much easier to reconfigure and move things around. If your server has a single network port, you can actually use it as the WAN for your firewall and have all your other networks be virtual networks inside without an associated physical port. And then use OpenVPN or again any other VPN to remote into it. Basically, I would say that running your firewall as a VM on a virtualization server makes a lot of sense if all of the clients for that firewall are other VMs on that same virtualization server. For more inspiration on this topic, you can check out uh, Wendell from Level 1 Techs with the Forbidden Router series, there's Hardware Haven with the Ultimate Firewall, and there's also the Protect Lee Appliance Review from Techno Team you can check out. If you just want to try out a different firewall, you shouldn't buy a computer just for that. It's perfectly reasonable to set up a proof of concept using virtual machines and then migrate to dedicated hardware if and once your needs evolve. Another interesting use case for a virtualized firewall is if you want to set up maybe a cybersecurity home lab or a subset in your home lab rather. If you want to maybe tinker and play with some malware, you can set up a firewall to make sure that your actual LAN is safe and secure, isolated from the infected network. Similarly, maybe you want to replicate some Kubernetes features like uh, namespaces and the network policies. In that case, you could deploy a firewall that is specific for that host and then set up VLANs for maybe each VM or each group of VMs and have firewall rules that will then apply to those. But at that point, I think that there are better ways to tackle this issue. Finally, if you are the only person reliant on this firewall for internet access and you are okay with the caveats discussed here, then by all means go for it. As you might have guessed, there is no really right or wrong answer here. There's a lot of people that are running their firewall as a bare metal instance and there's a lot of people running it on a virtual machine. And each group swears that their decision is the best and the other ones don't know what they're talking about. Essentially, having no other person reliant on this firewall means that there is no service level agreement. No angry roommate will come knocking down your door when Proxmox decides to reboot in order to update the kernel, for example. As it usually goes, there are pros and cons to each of the options. While virtualization provides flexibility and scalability, it also introduces complexity and instability. Ultimately, it is up for you to decide whether or not you should virtualize your firewall. It's no right or wrong answer here, it's just the solution that suits your needs the best. That being said, what are you running in your home lab? Do you have your firewall as a virtual machine or do you have an entire server dedicated just for running it? What made you take that decision? Let me know in the comment section down below. As always, I'll see you in the next one.